Quran Kareem Bismillahir Rahman Rahim Laqad kana lakum fi Rasulillah uswatun hasana Liman kana yarju Allah wa yawm al-akhirah wa dhakar Allah kathir And you have indeed in the messenger of Allah the most handsome, the most beautiful, the most beautiful path for any whose hope is in Allah in the final day and who engages much in the praise of Allah. This is in Surah Ahazab, verse 21. In this particular ayah of Quran, it is pointing us to an uswa, uswa hasana, an excellent pattern of conduct. When you look at the word uswa, uswa means a pattern like, if I was going to make a pair of pants, I'll go to the fabric store and I'll buy a pattern and I get that pattern and I sit it on a piece of cloth and then I can cut out a pair of pants and make a pair of pants with that pattern. And once I have the pattern, I can keep reproducing that pair of pants. So if I got a red piece of cloth and set the pattern on a red piece of cloth, I could produce a red pair of pants. But I could take the same pattern and I could put it on a blue piece of cloth, cut out the pattern, sew it up, and I would have a blue pair of pants. Then I could take that same pattern and I could put it on a white piece of cloth and cut it out and then, then take that cloth and sew it up and I would have a white piece of pants. And if I follow the pattern as I'm instructed to follow the pattern, then at the end of the day, I'll have a red pair of pants and a blue pair of pants, and a black pair of pants, and a white pair of pants, and they are all of equal quality because the pattern that was used to make them was a good pattern. So Allah says of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and when you say that, say it with conviction, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because as we get to know Muhammad, and I'm not sure how well we all know Muhammad, but I remember when I first began to do serious study into the seerah of Muhammad, I had read the Quran, sallallahu I had read the hadith and other things like that, but I had never really studied the seerah of Muhammad in depth, in, in depth way. But as I began to study his seerah and I, I got to know him, I really understood the hadith that says, you will not believe until the prophet becomes dearer to you than your own parents. As a young child, I couldn't understand this. I was eight, nine, ten years old. What do you mean the prophet becomes dearer to me than my own mother and father? I love my mother. I love my father. I see them go to work every day. I see my mother labor over a stove. I see her get on her knees and scrub the floor. I see my father go out and work no matter if he has a cold, if he has a headache, if his nose is running, if he's coughing. I see them go out and work. So as a young child, I couldn't understand this. I said, how am I supposed to love this man I've never seen? How am I supposed to love this man I've never experienced? How am I supposed to love him more than I love my own parents? When I began to study his life, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I began to learn how beautiful of a human being he was. And I would read in the Quran where it says that he is a'la bin al fusikum, that he is closer to the believers than they are to their own. Say. You know, qarib means close, right? My servants ask you concerning me, tell them I am near, right? That's Qarib, right? But Aulah, Aulah is not Qarib. So you have in this verse in the Quran that says Muhammad is closer to you than you are to your own self. But the word is not, that's used is not Qarib, it's Aulah. Allah, from Allah comes Wali. Wali. And 
And Wali means to be a friend and a protector. Your Wali is someone who is your friend, but who also looks after your interests, who protects your interests. So when you see Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his life, his model, his example, his behavior is, is, is preserving the best in you that God put in you, the best human nature in you, the best human disposition in, him, in, in you. So when you see him living and walking in the world, you see his example, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you see that his example is preserving the best that Allah has put in you. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. You have a beautiful community here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Imam Makram didn't believe me, but I was serious when I told him if I did not have responsibilities in Houston, and if I did not have a business that I've been in for the last 10 years, you know, it takes a while to build a business, that I would leave Houston. And I would move to Minneapolis. And not, not to be in a position or anything, just to be a, a community member. Just to come and enjoy your community because you have a beautiful community. And you are following the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In that you are respecting the gifts and the genius that everyone has to offer. When you study our dear prophet, he accommodated the gifts and geniuses of everyone. He did not discriminate based on any issue. He did not discriminate based on clan because he was from Baini Hashem. Yet he had followers from Baini Abdashem. He had followers from Baini Mahzum. He had followers from Baini um, um, Nafu. He had followers from Baini Hashem. And he did not ever in one instance say, you are from Baini Umayya, so you cannot follow me. I am a Hashem. Even today, you go to the Middle East, they have the Hashemite kingdom of Jordan. Don't they? They call it the Hashemite kingdom. They have still not left tribalism. And the prophet came to them for it. Now, I'm not trying to step on toes. I'm just telling you what it is. I can't change the way it is. It is what it is. So, so, if, 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 uh, so I'm not trying to offend anyone who's from that part of the world. But you go there now, you have a kingdom that's based on clan. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came to erase that. He came to wipe that out. And he incorporated the genius of everyone who wants to be in service of Islam. He was a rahmatin lil alamin. He was a mercy to all the world. So when Bilal, the 